Why does this music make us feel the way it does? Singing is something we all share. It connects us. And so it's no surprise that listening to choral music is an emotional and physical experience. But what is it about the sound world, about the simple combinations of sung notes that make it sound so perfect? Why does choral music sound so good? Music produced by any ensemble is a complex and messy affair. Every note played or sung by a musician is not simply made up of a single tone, but instead of a number of individual frequencies. If you sing a G, for example, air passing through the vibrating vocal folds produces both the fundamental frequency, which is usually the loudest one in the mix, as well as a series of higher frequencies called harmonics. The combination of all of these frequencies is then called a complex tone. Any instrument, whether it produces sound by air resonating in a chamber or through the vibration of a string, creates multi-frequency tones, and the amplitude or loudness of each harmonic determines, in part, what an instrument sounds like, its timbre. When different instrumentalists or singers play and sing together then, all these complex tones combine and interfere with each other, which does cause a significant problem. How can you even begin to match all these frequencies? If it goes wrong, and if the harmonics in separate complex tones don't align, what results is a phenomenon known as beating. This is an inherent roughness in the sound, which we hear as an audible fluctuation in amplitude. The best way of demonstrating this is by playing two tones at the same time and gradually increasing the frequency of one whilst keeping the other fixed. There's the beating. So, to avoid this, and to achieve an in-tune chord, you need to ensure that the frequency of each note within the chord lines up with the harmonics of the other complex tones, leading to a tuning system known as just or pure intonation. And this can only really be done by altering intonation in real time. Some instrumentalists will do this naturally, especially string players, but professional singers can do it best. They can train themselves to feel the beating and to resolve it in a fraction of a second, resulting in just intonation. So choral music is, arguably, the closest an ensemble can ever get to being completely in tune. But it's not just this versatility in tuning that makes choral music so appealing. It's also to do with another trick of the voice, called formants. Formants are created by the resonance of parts of the vocal tract. As we've just seen, the vibration of the vocal folds produces a note made up of a chord of harmonics, which then passes into the pharynx and out through the mouth. These sound waves then interfere with other parts of the vocal tract, and in the process, certain harmonics can be caused to resonate, making them louder. This only happens, though, if the frequency of those harmonics falls within what we call the frequency range of the formant, which we can think of as the resonant frequency of a particular part of the tract. Different parts of the vocal tract have different resonant frequencies, and so you can produce a number of different formants. But you can also change these formants by simply changing the shape of parts of the tract. Even slight alterations in the size and shape of the larynx, of the throat, of the muscles, in the size of the vocal cavity and of the position of your tongue can radically change the qualities of a sound as it alters the amplitudes of the harmonics you're producing. This is what gives rise to vocal timbre. It's why we all speak and sing in completely different ways and why we can also, individually, produce so many different sounds with the voice. And professional singers through years of training, can carefully control the formants to highlight certain harmonics within the mix. There are some extreme examples of this. By changing the positioning of her tongue and by increasing and decreasing the space inside her mouth, Anna Maria is able to control the formants, specifically a cluster of the second and third, and so highlight different harmonics within the series. 
In simplified terms, what she's really doing is just subtly changing the vowel. The sound of different vowels, like timbre, is just determined by the resonant frequencies of the formants. So how does this apply to choral singing? Although most professional singers will never be able to get close to the clarity of the upper harmonics achieved by Anna Maria, what this does show is that by changing the vowel sound, you can bring out different harmonics within the series and so reinforce key frequencies within a chord. Here's an example. Let's imagine a choir is singing a major chord with the basses on the tonic and the altos on the major third. If the basses control their vowel to make the second formant highlight the tenth harmonic achieved by a brightening of the vowel, this will in turn encourage the altos to sing their F sharp in just intonation, as their fourth harmonic will match the basses tenth. This not only helps with tuning, but it also amplifies the major third within the chord, giving the choral sound a rich, warm feel. But let's say instead a choir is singing a minor chord. You wouldn't want the tenth harmonic to be highlighted in the basses, as this would give an F sharp, F natural clash. Instead, you might want to bring out the eighth or ninth harmonics, which would work in the context of this chord. This is achieved by the basses darkening their vowel sound. Although almost all singers will never think of formants and harmonics in this way, they will often make subtle and instinctive changes to their vowel sounds in terms of brightening or darkening a vowel in order to tune a chord, subconsciously altering their formants to benefit the overall choral sound. But intonation isn't the only benefit of formants. Formants can also help us understand how a professionally trained soloist can project over a full orchestra. When singing in a full-bodied, resonant way, soloists can produce a timbre with a bright, ringing quality that comes from amplifying the harmonics around 3 kHz, formed from a cluster of the third to the fifth formants, which our ears happen to be particularly sensitive to. This is what's known as the singer's formant and produces the ring associated with harmonically rich singing. Although mostly associated with opera singers, this is employed by singers in all professional choirs. If singing in the rich part of the voice, if singing with resonance, professional singers will often find their collective volume is significantly louder, but that also their vocal strain is reduced as a more vibrant sound can be created with much less effort. You can see the richness of the upper harmonics when comparing the spectrograms of professional versus amateur choirs. This is why professional groups with only a few singers can produce a loud, bright and beautiful sound. It's no wonder then that choral singing is so appealing. Professional choirs have the ability to take advantage of the astonishing complexity of the vocal machinery and can produce music that is not only perfectly tuned and harmonically rich, but is also deeply intense. Singing is something that feels rooted deep in all of us, that taps into feelings of longing, anguish and love, brought into focus by the mesmerising sounds produced by choirs across the world. It's just impossible not to be amazed by how constantly surprising the sound of a choir can be. And just to show that normal people can also control their formants, here's me singing a G harmonic series to finish. Thank you so much for watching. This was really fun to put together and I do hope you enjoyed it. If you want to keep up to date with all my new videos, do subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so you're notified about any new videos that I upload. See you next time.